Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Cloak Conscious. I am doing an all signs reading today. It is a solar eclipse in Virgo. If you practice traditional or Libra in modern astrology, I brought my tissues because I'm actually kind of sick. Um, so hopefully I don't have to take too many breaks, but I just don't feel like editing and doing all that stuff. So, uh, all right, so let's get started on this reading. Um, cause I practice traditional. I want to start with Virgos, my Virgo friends and family. And I am using a traditional, sorry, not traditional. This is, this is my go-to. This is my basic. This was my first, uh, tarot deck that I purchased. So this is my, um, my safe space. So let's get started on this reading for my Virgo, look at that, Virgo friends and family, um, divine higher power of positivity, please connect me with Virgo's highest self, ancestors, spirit guides, um, angels that need to guide Virgo into a message for today's reading getting started okay perfect let's start with the five that I have okay so starting off we have it says material and spiritual prosperity I love this this is the six of pentacles so it's a good start I feel like what I like about this deck is it's very self-explanatory um so it'll be easy for you to follow along with me but anyways, so it seems like you're putting a lot of effort and energy into your physical world. That's why it's um, material and spiritual. It seems like you're putting in um, a lot of effort to see the changes in your life. Okay, you see how everything's divine, everything's in alignment. That's why on both sides, it's symmetrical. He's got the sun there. The sun's beaming, illuminating, bringing life, right? Seeing seeing things as they are, that's the best part about spirituality is it's, um, it helps you see things clearly, right? Um, yeah, so that's why this is material and spiritual. Um, and then it says right here you have emotional loss. This is five of cups. It seems... As if maybe you're grieving a situation and I feel um, usually anytime we go through a spiritual awakening of some sort, um, there's always grieving. Like, I don't care what it is. You're going to have to grieve the past version of yourself. You're going to have to grieve family members, friendships, an old job that you had. And it doesn't matter if this happened 20 plus years ago. It could have happened yesterday. No matter when it happened or if you've already been grieving about it, you've been going to therapy about it, it's something that um, that you need to let go of. And I, I very much is in alignment with the uh, eclipse that we have going on today. We have the hope card. This is star card, I believe. I don't remember. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um... And I find it interesting because this is how the eclipse looked like today, by the way. By, with the naked eye, if you didn't have any, like, um, anything to, to see to darken, you know, the light from the sun. This is how the eclipse looked like today if you went outside and uh, looked at it. But, um, and you also have the sun here very big and bright. So it seems like you always knew, you always knew that this day would come. Like you knew that you would be enlightened and you would have to let this go. You knew that your life, all the effort and energy you put into grieving this situation, eventually it would no longer bother you. Because that's how it works, you know? It's, it, there's, the death card isn't here, but it totally feels like a death. It's like you're grieving something or someone that's no longer here and even if it is here it's not in your life the way that it used to be so it feels like a death so you know people change people grow um we have the most emotional withdrawal card eight of cups 
yeah, obviously this is a, this is a journey you have to go through alone. You can see he's alone. He's alone again. He's alone, but he has spiritual guidance, right? Which is the same thing we can kind of see in all of that. You can see the spiritual guidance behind the light, the light. And even though he's here by himself and he's grieving this situation, he does, he hasn't lost hope, you know? He knows what's coming. So this is obviously, this is about you. I don't think this is about anybody else. I know that normally they say readings. It's just the energy that's going on in your life. Um, so usually it's you or somebody else in your life, but this is totally you. This You're on your own on this one. Um, and we have sacral chakra. So this is, it's interesting. This is the energy. Um, I feel like you're moving into, um, cause you have to grieve a situation in order to embrace. Right. And I don't, I, you're healing this energy, right? This like creative energy, um, and the reason I want to say creative because of this, the light here and here, this is totally creative. You look at this, you can't say this isn't like a fertile creative thing. Same thing. Very creative energy. This is the energy, the fruits of your labor, essentially. And how I'm perceiving this, if, if you are grieving, let's just say, um, the old version of you, or like you're healing that inner child, um, this makes me feel like this is your inner child energy coming out you know because when we're kids um we're we have a, an imagination right full of creativity we know the things that we like and we don't like and we're starting to learn to express ourselves and then influences come in right society our family um just all these different influences telling us that our expressions are judged or they're inappropriate or they're um, against a certain practice or belief from your culture or etc so it's just like you have all of these things that start limiting you and preventing you being authentic right and i think you're grieving maybe like forgiving society you're you've you know it's like you've come to an age where you're like all right i'm in my 20s i'm in my 30s i'm in my 40s i'm in my 60s and it's just like finally you're in a place where you're like i'm breaking free from this mold in which i was you know created in um limit you're so limited and now you're limitless that's that's what you're grieving you're grieving those co the conditioning um it feels like Let's get some advice from my animal deck card. What advice do you have for my Virgo friends and family? I have two cards. Starting with Coyote, it says, Wise Fool. Accept your follies and find teaching in them. Eagle, Spirit. Trust in your highest self. Yes. I love the idea of coyotes because they're very, they're seen very, um, as a spiritual animal, especially in, um, in Native American, uh, beliefs, right? I mean, most animals are, that, that this whole deck is, right? And this is my cat, Mimsies. If you haven't met her, um, from last week, she's here making sure that the messages are being channeled, um effectively anyways so the thing about coyotes is that um sorry <coughs> anyway so the wise fool in my heart is it reminds me of like uh Neptune, there you go. I'm like, why can't I think of it? Um, Neptune energy, right? 
because it reminds me of Pisces. I don't know why. I know that Pisces spirit animal is a fish, but I feel like it is this card in particular just because wise fool. It's giving new opportunities, but also naive, you know? It, it's like you're new to this you're not new to this world, but at the same time, you're new to being yourself. You're new to being authentic. You're new at expressing yourself. Um, so it's like, although you've been here quite some time and you've learned, you know, things aren't meant for you, you still haven't learned to like express yourself the way that you really are. Um, I feel like you're just naive to this whole experience even though you've probably been through so many things which makes you wise but this is this is a new experience um that hopefully you can use what you've learned from your past experiences uh to reflect onto this this grieving um that you're going through and trust your highest self while going through this okay the eagle has what we call eagle eyes right they're so far up in the air and they can see all the tiny little fish in the water. And she confirms this. She clarifies this message. So you may not realize it, but your highest self is up there watching you with eagle eyes. Every step of the way you're being supported and guided on how to work through this healing and this grieving um, so that way you can express yourself and kind of heal that childhood trauma because that that's what I'm thinking it is and if it's not childhood trauma it's got to be a childbirth um, like a traumatic childbirth whether you were born um, traumatically through your mother or if you had a traumatic pregnancy or something of that nature. Anything that has to do with like creativity um, or fertility and reproduction. Um, anything of that nature um, is what you're grieving. But it also reminds me of fifth house energy. So um, look at where, um, what sign is in your fifth house. What planets are there. What's being aspected there. Because... Um, Because I feel like that will reflect accurately um, what it is that you have a little bit of trauma with and, and what you need to heal. But that is today's message for my Virgo friends and family. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Enjoy your solar eclipse. Don't get crazy. Um, yeah, have a great one. And I will see you guys next week. Let's get started on my <coughs> on my Libra friends and family. My Libra friends and family. <clears throat> All right. So, for my Libra friends and family, divine higher power positivity. What should my Libra friends expect for this upcoming week of October? Please connect me with their highest self so that way we can channel an accurate message. Let's get it started. <clears throat> wow. All right, do you have anything else to say, Spirit? Perfect. Start with these six cards. All right, first card, you have third eye chakra. Then you have wisdom. Then you have solar plexus. Universe. Three of cups. And fertility. Okay, I'm going to tell you something. There's only one card on here that is in 
Dang it. A five. Look, five. This one's a six, but everything else is three, three, three. 21 is three. Got to notice those little things. And you know what's interesting that I notice? It, it may just be a perspective thing. But you notice how it's like yellow, orange over here, and he's like wearing this purple, and there's a little bit of blue going on. Okay. You think he's wearing the third eye energy? Wow, the solar plexus energy is coming in and illuminating right here in his hand the truth of knowledge. In red, in... um. In the chakra system is your root right your base chakra which is all about surviving and that's the thing if you can figure out the key to survival you know everything else is much easier because you're not focused on surviving right and this orange orange in the chakras is about um, expression and creativity and fertility and then you have yellow which is all about that solar plexus energy. Um, it's that gut feeling, emotions, things of that nature. And then you have third eye right here, which is this like per perfect purplish blue color. Um, I don't know what the right word, right color that would be. But anyways, you get where I'm going with this. It feels insane saying like there's no better way to describe this than divine timing like this is such a celestial experience right so I feel like right now you were just aligning your chakras you are working on your chi your energy right and the consequence of that which is a good one like it's a good um, effect is that the world the universe God higher self is rewarding you with that because you're coming into alignment right this is an alignment when you see people or when you reconnect with other people you guys are all coming in together right meeting at a place at a time and i feel like that's like alignment you know you're, you're coming in together at one time so i feel like now this is for the there are people out there who are really really manifesting getting pregnant um and it, I feel like that's going to happen. So if you're trying, you're going to get pregnant. If you're not trying, you need to be cautious. Because <laughs> rejoice and celebration, it doesn't mean just like having a good time, right? This is coming together with people that you haven't seen in a while. And that could be a spirit baby. So be careful. If you're not trying to have a kid right now, universe <laughs> it's, it's, like I, I can't make it up it's just oh it's funny anyway so if you know if you're trying to have a baby uh time is definitely favoring that um if not it does seem like <coughs> like you guys maybe you and some friends or you have some business partners you guys are going to start a business I very much see that happening as well um, just because it's a group of people and fertility is not just about, um, uh, it's plant, it's about planting seeds, right? It's about being fertile. It's about the soil being, you know, uh, very full of nutrition, um, uh, and minerals and there being plenty of water. The sun's not too hot. Like it's just all the perfect conditions for you to plant something and actually see something grow from it. So yeah, if whatever this is, it's like the perfect, perfect time to manifest something, Libras. Amazing, absolutely amazing time. 
So, what advice do you have for my Libra friends and family? Divine higher power. We're going to use my animal spirit deck. Mm. I don't know a card that doesn't like what if a spirit animal if I had to guess what Libra's spirit animal would be, it would it would be a swan, right? So elegant, so beautiful, majestic, perfect. Yeah. Of course. Anyway, so it says swan, appreciate the beauty inside and all around you. I think that this energy that you you are mastering is just a lot of, you know, accepting and and, and this just perspective that you're doing. The universe really loves this perspective of you just acknowledging, being aware, being conscious, empathetic, compassionate. The universe is loving it. And then it says, turtle retreat, retreat. Stop trying to make something happen. Now, the universe doesn't want you to force this, by the way. You know it's coming, but the universe doesn't want you to force it because it wants it to happen organically. And think about it. Don't you want it to happen organically? That way you could say it was meant to last. I watched someone say it on a podcast where it was like, it's not meant, everything is meant to be, but not everything is meant to last. And now we want this to last, right? We don't want this to just come into our life and then it just kind of crumbles because we were too nitpicky on the details. Let you put your intention out there. You, you let the universe know what your manifestation is and the universe is going to bring it back to you the way that it is meant to. But if you start getting all controlling and perfectionist and OCD, um, then you're not going to be able to enjoy it. And that's what the universe wants you to do is just live in the moment and just appreciate the way it comes in and the way your life is happening, okay? So that is your message for you today for the upcoming week for my Libra friends and family. Um, that was amazing. That was beautiful. I am yeah, good. On this eclipse, I mean, it better be working in your favor. Anyways, so... Have a great rest of your day and I will see you guys next time as I roll into what's after Scorpio. Gang, 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 Scorpio gang. Let's begin. Um, divine higher power of positivity. What should my Scorpio friends and family expect for this upcoming week? Uh-huh. We'll get into it. Let's get into it. Wait. <coughs> Once I go, I just, I don't want to stop going. And by the way, I caught that card. I'm cozy. And I don't do reversals, by the way. That was my first reversal. Oof. 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 <coughs> All right. Anything else? Did I hire powers? Parrots? Okay. Not hating. Let's start on this. Okay. So... Starting off strong, we have the fertility card. All about creativity, expression, planting seeds, yada yada. However, with this five of swords here, it's not going the way we planned. However, I just want you guys to be mindful, watchers, because I am also a very dominant Scorpio placement myself. Stares intensely. Um, just because it doesn't, the conditions, how do I say this? The conditions may not always be in our favor. Okay? And unlike Libra, who had perfect conditions, the perfect soil with minerals, plus a plenty of water, perfect temperature, not too much sun, not too much shade, they have the perfect conditions for their manifestations. You and me? No. We were meant to struggle. We were meant we were meant for more. Because us Scorpios, we don't like to just be handed shit. We're a little ungrateful when we get things. We're happy, but then we're like, mm, I didn't deserve this because I needed to 
step on a sword and get beaten up and yada 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 just for me to deserve this well you know what that's what's gonna happen that's what's happening because we always feel like we need to go through some very deep transformational death and rebirth in order to deserve something like we just have this thing like i know they say libra's about balance but we have this like mentality where we have to have an equal amount of exchange if something good's coming my way i have to have an equal amount of bad things happening in my life in order for me to deserve it that's what we call a permission slip i learned that from bashar if you guys don't know who bashar is you should look into him he's wild anyways learn that from bashar permission slips permission slips are things are excuses that we make up in our head to validate why we do or don't deserve something or why we believe something. He just calls it a permission slip. Religion, for example, is a permission slip. We just want to feel worthy of God. So we do X, Y, and Z. We pray, we repent, we give, we are nice to our neighbor, things like that. If you're doing it for the reason other than you simply enjoy it, and all the other reasons are you're just trying to get to heaven or forgiveness, yada, yada. That's a permission slip. You're trying to feel worthy. Scorpio, we do that all the fucking time. So <clears throat> that's what's going on here. As we're, as we're trying to get our permission slips. Um, but that's okay. Because although it's not going the way we planned, which this is normal to us. The, don't act surprised that, you know, we put it out there and then we're like, oh. I didn't get it the way I wanted it. Oh, but we know because we're psychic and we're intuitive. We know that it, we know what's behind that door. We know what's there. We know the manifestations there. We're just meditating. We're keeping calm, making sure that, um, we're not distracting ourselves and sabotaging our manifestation, but it is causing some, uh some stress yeah yeah i mean it's like you just gotta be patient you know it's coming don't worry about it you see this passion ignited we will have our manifestation we will have our cake and eat a tomb but we gotta bake the cake ourselves and yes we're gonna burn ourselves in the process and that is not a typical for us okay let's get some advice advice for my friends and family Scorpio gang what advice do you have for my Scorpios okay. beaver go ahead and just do it mmm no more permission slip, huh? Universe says, no, you don't need a permission slip. Butterfly transformation. It says, get ready for a big breakthrough. You know, <coughs> hold on, I just. <coughs> you don't think this is funny. You may not think this is funny. I think this is funny because it's saying, Go ahead and just do it. Do what? Transform. Rebirth. Just go. Just do it already. Like, you. It's saying, like, you don't need to wait for your permission slip to come. Like, just go through the process. You know that you need to, um, you know, you need to feel worthy of it. So, go through some shit and then come accept your abundance afterwards. <laughs> Like, we, we do this to ourselves, you know? We're like, I really, really need money. I want to ask a friend. But before I ask a friend for, for money, I want to let them know that I'm going to work my ass off 12 hours a day, nonstop, no break, no lunches. Everything's going to be perfect. I'm going to hurt myself so much just so that way they know that they want to give me this money. Instead of them just being our friend be like yeah i'll loan you some money like i don't know we just have this internal feeling where we're not good enough and that's why we always got to transform that's why we always got to go death and rebirth you know because we're learning but anyways manifestations coming 
it's just the permission slip. So whatever your permission slip is, if, if you're a religious person, then do some praying, do some repenting, go volunteer, go do whatever um, to make you feel like you deserve it. Because Libra over here ain't doing shit. They just accepting their abundance. So why do they have it so easy? Why, why do they just feel worthy all the time? Like who taught them that? They got to teach us something. Okay. Okay. I'm going to wipe this away. So let's get started on my next sign. Sagittarius. Divine higher power of positivity. Please. Ooh. Channel some messages from my Sagittarius friends and family. I think third eye chakra came out first, but no matter. And then we have hope. Mm. We have the four of wands, two of cups. A. Beautiful, marvelous, magnificent. Oh, and then we have this eight of cups. Okay, so started off strong. <clears throat> I think you saw something. There's there's multiple ways this could go down. Either you you got a glimpse of something that has happened or something that will happen. Um with this third eye chakra. That that's why I'm saying that. I think you saw something and that's what led to this in the end, this emotional withdrawal. <clears throat> sorry <clears throat> anyway so you saw something and it led you to kind of isolate yourself now that's why I'm saying it could go one of two ways either life was going well Something happened. I don't know what it was. Something happened. Maybe I'll ask. What, what happened? What is this that caused this emotional withdrawal? Okay. Two of swords in the base root chakra. Okay. I don't... I think that... You're not ready for this abundance. Or at least you're telling yourself that. You're telling yourself like, I want it. I'm just not ready for it. Okay. Now, we'll get advice later. But it appears to me that you do have um, abundance. Very, it's, I don't know how to describe it. So... It's something that you've been dreaming about. It's something that you've been manifesting um, your whole life. It feels like a whole life thing, right? Like this is the white picket fence. Per dream house, family, literally rainbow, everything. Like this is it. This is the real deal, okay? With your dream person. This is everything you've ever wanted. Now this may not, your dream house with the white picket fence and the dog and you know the perfect person and kids may that's not everyone's cup of tea some people drink coffee some people like regular water you know orange juice whatever it is like everybody has their own version of this but this is it for you and you got a glimpse of it and I don't know if you got a glimpse of it because of um of meditation like if you were just meditating alone or if you like you just if you could see it essentially you saw it and you know it's coming and you know it's there and I think a part of you don't doesn't think that you're ready for it right look at the red how the red this is what's bothering him is this and this represents just trying to survive just trying to get by financially you know like you're struggling financially you're struggling with food you're struggling with your health mental health um you know just things of that nature like you can barely get by you're literally just focusing on surviving and getting through the day every single day and you're scared and i, I don't know if, if because you're going through this or if you're scared that 
this is going to happen. Like you're going to receive this abundance, this perfect everything um, that you've been manifesting. And I think you're scared that maybe it'll go back to this, that it'll be ripped away from you, you know? And I think a lot of people who like, um, what's the word? Who suffer from, or who have, sorry, who have experienced someone who passed away. And I'm using this as an example. Um, but people who have experienced someone who that they love pass away, it's like that. Um, you know, they say you, it makes you want to hold on to your loved ones even tighter, longer, you know, um, and then just be in their presence forever. Um, for the people that are alive, it makes you more grateful and aware that, you know, your, your time is limited. But I think when you're going through that loss, um, it, you're scared to get close again. You're scared to open up because you think that by attaching um, or loving, it's going to be ripped away from you again. And to prevent you from feeling like that ever again, you just detach or they detach. Um, but the, the, that's what's going on here is you're scared to accept this because you think it's going to be ripped away from you. And I get it. it. It's trust issues. Trust issues. Dude, I get it. I'm I'm a heavy Scorpio placement girl. Like, I completely understand. And Mimsy's is here to let you know that ain't gonna happen. Right, dude? Thank you. See, look at the way she just looks at me. Isn't she just so perfect? Doesn't this just bring you happiness? Doesn't this just remind you that life is amazing? Oh, she's so cute. You tell him, Mimsies. You tell him. See? She sits on my lap and tells me everything's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Anyways, so let's get some advice for you. Minties, I love you, but I got to get some advice for them. But you're doing great. You're doing great. You, you keep them distracted. You remind them about the good things in life. You do it. La, 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 la. Anyways. All right, so, um... Advice for my Sagittarius friends and family. Horse, freedom, you always have a choice. So you can choose to be scared and let it, let life pass you by and you don't accept your abundance because you think it's going to be ripped away from you or because you know that, you know, love doesn't last a lifetime. Or you can... You know, hold, grab on, hold on for as long as it lasts, you know. Right here. Lion, courage. Ask for what you want. Don't be afraid, you know. You know you want to take it, and it's okay to be scared. Have courage. Be bold and take charge of your abundance. Buffalo. You're provided for in all ways. I know that you may think that this, um, this abundance is going to be short-lived, but the universe is, is letting you know that it's not. It's here to last. It wants you to be a part of it because it was created specifically for you. And if you're not going to have it, no one else can have it. And why would the universe want that? It doesn't. It wants you to accept it. So, I know, it's scared. You have trust issues. I totally get it. But um, definitely consider working through that energy, through that um, base chakra energy that you're scared of, you know, going back to. So that way you can live in fulfillment. That is it. Um, so thank you, Sagittarius friends. I'm going to start my reading now for, um, Capricorns. All right, Capricorns, what message do you have 
today. I saw another punch flip in there. <coughs> All right, two of wands, waiting game. Solar plexus. I could have sworn I seen the passion ignited card. I did. Passion ignited, okay. I have a couple Capricorn friends, but that's in uh, modern astrology, so... Anyways, we'll say the same. Okay, so you have planted the seeds. <coughs> and you have a gut feeling. I, I have this, there's a gut feeling going on here. Solar plexus is right here in the gut and the passion ignited stems it may not look it looks like it's coming from the gut and the heart area so you have a gut feeling about something this is this is your intuition your psychic abilities are kicking in capricorns i always remind you that you're psychic so Whew. sorry i had to get that out Anyways, follow this. Your your body's taking you somewhere. It's leading you somewhere. We gotta follow it. So what is this? What is this gut feeling Capricorn is dealing with? <clears throat> Base chakra. When I see this card, it reminds me about just surviving, getting by. I think you know that hard times are coming. And you've been planning, saving, preparing. Because with this base chakra here, it's all about like barely paycheck to paycheck. You know, barely having enough money, barely having food, barely being able to get by in any means. Your mental health is shit. Uh, your physical health is shit. And I think that you can tell that something's coming on where you you may face hardships. This is going to test you, put it this way. You're, you're going through a test. Um, so you may not face this adversity, but it could be the consequence of how you react um, or the way that you go through this. What else? <coughs> Yeah, the universe wants you, it says rest and rejuvenate, but notice how he's alone meditating. <coughs> I think the universe really wants you to be isolated. Don't go out, don't blow your money. Don't, don't engage in um, arguments or anything like that. Prioritize yourself and your health. You see how he's connecting He's really utilizing the energy coming up from the, the grass. It's what we call grounding, right? So he's utilizing that energy to prepare him for this, this test. It kind of feels, I wanted to say the word battle, but um, we'll see. I mean, I feel like battle was the right word because this came out. Whatever it is, is you're going to get through it. Um, because you, because of this, you isolating and you taking this time, um, for introspection, you're able to perceive things, um, from a spiritual aspect. That's why you're wise. It's coming from a place of perspective and experience, knowledge, um, and that's what's going to help you get through this and avoid this. Um, as best as you can, but it does feel like you're being drained completely. But you have a gut feeling that this was going to happen. Um, so either you're going to get sick, um, or you're going to lose your job briefly, or uh, you, you may have to move briefly, 
you know, where it's like, it's, it's something that's going to happen fast where you feel like, oh my gosh, instability. Am, am I going to be homeless? Am I going to be jobless? Am I going to have food in the fridge? Am I, you know, something of that nature. So, but you're going to get through it. It's going to be short lived from what it looks like, but I think that you can see this coming, you know, um, just because that, that gut feeling, you have a gut feeling it's coming and it could be a situation that the reason why you see it coming is just because um because you said something or did something that it, you knew would backfire and end up this way or um you're just psychic as fuck so let's get some advice for my capricorns a few cards came out all right let's start first with badger Perseverance, dig in and see it through to completion. Bear, boundaries. Stand your ground. And Fox, adaptability. It says adapt to the changes that are happening. Yeah, you will persevere. You are going to have to adapt to these changes. And this bear with the stand your ground, it kind of feels, it does feel like a battle. It feels like a war. It does feel like you're being attacked. Now, like I said, you could be sick, you know, which leads you to not be able to work, which leads you to making less money, which leads you to not have enough money for groceries. It's some, something of that nature where something is affecting you and it is a battle. And I don't think necessarily this is an internal battle between like you and your psyche, but it could be and it ends up affecting you in the material world um as well as physical health so either it's going to affect you physically financially or um or with your body right that those are the two ways that it's going to affect you but you will make it through if you have to you know you have to adapt skip a few meals or just start um preserving your food things like that but you're gonna get through this which is really good. It's a very good, I mean, I wouldn't say it's a great message, but I do think that it was very clear on how you can get through this. So, um, good luck for the upcoming week, Capricorns. So let's move on to Aquarius. My Aquarius, um, sun, moon, rising, and Venus signs. Are there are any placements that are being aspected, amplifying that energy. Perfect. Okay. Starting off with Eight of Wands. It says accelerated motion with throat chakra here. Speaking your truth, huh? Somebody hurt you. What happened? You're fucking calling them out on it. it, it it's giving confrontation. Yep. Yep, it does. <coughs> Okay, then we have patience. Patience, trapped in fear, and intuition. Interesting, these are all eight and fives, by the way. The eight of wands, I have the throat chakra, which is number five, five of cups. I have the patience, which is 14, five, and then I have Eight of Swords. And then lastly, the um, number two. But, <coughs> you know, I find this interesting. I, I It feels like you want to get something off your chest. You want to say it. And the universe is saying that you've been holding back. You've been thinking about it, contemplating the best way to approach the situation and you're just a little scared of how it might turn out. Like if it's with a coworker, you're scared of retaliation. Or if it's with um, a neighbor, a Karen neighbor, you're scared of retaliation. It just feels like you're, you're thinking about the consequences of your actions if you were to confront um, said person. And the universe is just telling you that you know the best way to handle this situation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So let's see, let's, 
Um, this was quite a fast message. Is there anything else for Aquarius? Yeah, you've been suffering in silence. You really want to speak your truth. My table's so wobbly. And you know what comes first? Her head scratches. And her booty scratches. Oh, yes. All right, come on, Minty Girl. Thank you. Thank you for that kiss. You saw that? She gave me a little boop. All right, so advice for my Aquarius friends and family. Advice for my Aquarius friends and family, please. Whew. Come on, give me some advice. There it is. It says elephant resolve. You will overcome any obstacles. I know that. But that's still not great advice. You're being so diplomatic. Do you, how do you want them to handle this? Beaver productiveness. Go ahead and just do it. And we have the rabbit of fertility. It says your creativity is at a peak. I think the universe is suggesting that you go about it in a creative way. Um, kind of think about what you want to say first and be strategic. So that way, if anything you say doesn't backfire on you. Um, you know, in case somebody wants to throw hands or try and get you fired or whatever. But it seems like you have the full support of the universe. Beautiful. Well, good luck, Aries. Please comment. Let me know what, what that is. I mean, uh, I'm a little cheese muscle over here, so um, tell me. Tell me what happened. Okay, let's get started on the next sign of Pisces. Mm. If you're wondering what my drink is, <clears throat> it's cranberry juice. Okay. All right, Pisces. Friends and family, let's get started. What should Pisces expect for the upcoming week to find higher power of positivity? My sister in laws a Pisces, but in um, modern astrology. Oh my gosh, I have like little cat hairs on my nose. They tickle. Anyway, so, oh, I love how these, this is the beginning and this is the end card. Beginning, end. See how they're just like both with their swords in the air. Okay, successful. However, it feels like Speaking your truth, this is very similar to Aquarius. Um, speaking your truth has caused, a, I want to say like, I feel like this is within yourself, but it may also be with somebody else. It, it triggered something. Speaking your truth triggered like a spiritual awakening or an ego death or it made you reflect on on your beliefs of some sort because this this is the wands here I, I kind of associate the wands with beliefs even though you would think that'd be a sword card I do think of it because it's like a spiritual thing and I think that beliefs is like intertwined with spirituality so anyway so I think that this is two ways this happened. Either something was said and it sparked something 
Um, it sparked, re it, it revealed something, a revelation. There you go. Truth was spoken and a revelation happened. Did you speak into somebody else causing revelation? Did they speak into you causing re revelation? Did you speak to yourself? Did you have a thought that caused revelation? It's very interesting. <coughs> kind of give me more detail. This was meant to happen also, by the way. Destiny card. This was meant to happen. This is a part of your spiritual journey. And I kind of, this could totally be like you opened, you opened up a spiritual portal. Okay. I feel like this is you. Like if I'm going to speak what I truly think it is, cause I could keep it broad, but I, I truly think you spoke some shit and it turned a switch on in your head where you're like, wait, wait, was that my thought? Did that thought just come from God? That, that thought made me just realize something. What? Now I'm questioning my beliefs. Now I'm questioning my experience. I'm having an existential crisis. That's how I think this went down. However, this could be interchangeable. You said something and now this is happening to some, somebody else. Somebody else said something and now you're going through it. You know, but somehow you are involved with this. <coughs> but <coughs> with destiny here... With this victory and success, this, like, if you're having major deja vu, this is why. This is why. Universe wanted you to have this revelation, this revelation of truth. Now, it doesn't mean that it's confirming a pre-existing, like, belief that you may have. Because um, I think that this is a very common misconception, um, is that they a lot of people believe that something will confirm what like <laughs> like a spiritual belief of theirs and that's not always the case and they have to like go through these same cycles over and over again not realizing why do I keep going through this I don't understand God blah 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 and it's like because you were just biased you know like don't be fucking biased for a moment and you would understand the revelation you know, just because you have a revelation, just because it speaks truth doesn't mean it's in alignment with your bias. Okay? So, be cautious of that. But I do find this very interesting. I am very curious to know what this revelation was. So, if, if you can let me know in your comments what this revelation was without your bias involved in it. um, Because then can maybe... Because this is just all to help you, okay? Like, just saying. A lot of people don't don't recognize that we're all here, like, on the same team, you know? Um, so, don't, don't try and use biases, okay? Because that's the reason people get held back in the spiritual world, okay? Or physical world. They get held back because they're mentally, spiritually, physically, like, immature. Anyways, craziness. Let's get some advice for you guys. Wow, a revelation. <coughs> Let's see what this revelation is about. What advice do you have for my Pisces? Mm -hmm. We have Badger here. Perseverance. Dig it through and see it to completion. Dude, this card keeps coming out. And Swan, Grace. Appreciate the beauty inside and all around you. I kind of feel like universe really wants you to dig into this revelation. Not from a place of bias, but just learn about it. Um, and that's like one thing too. I feel like this is a, a touchy subject that I'm not going to, because it's sad that it's political, um, but I'm not going to get into it entirely, but I'm using it as an example. I feel like this revelation could be um, similar to like what's going on with Israel versus Palestine. I'm not getting into it, but you understand that there is a dilemma of two different sides. Now, at the end of the day, 
There's no team, there's no sides. And it's the same way with all politics. It's the same way with everybody. There's no sides. Stop taking sides. You know whose side we're on? Nobody getting injured. Nobody getting injured, everybody being happy, everybody being healthy, everybody being safe. That is the side we're on. If you have to pick a side, that's the problem. Because it, it's a bias. So, and that's the same thing, you know, uh, it's the same thing with any debate, right? It's like, you may think there's a right and a wrong side, but when they say there's two sides to every story, there is. There's different experiences and perspectives. And there's not entirely one bad guy and entirely one good person, okay? Good people do bad things, bad people do good things. It's yin and yang, okay? So I think what this universe is really trying to like show you with this revelation is that it may be something, this may be something that you may not realize is against your bias. You know, you may not even know it. And you may think it is for your bias. But universe wants you to look into it. Dig into it, right? And the reason why I brought up the whole Israel versus Palestine thing, because it's like everyone wants to talk about history. That now is that is the appropriate time. Dig into it. Learn about it. Learn about the history of Palestine and Zionism and Jewish or whatever. Like I'm just using that because that is like a modern take. That is currently what we're struggling with in the world, right? I'm sure there's many other things, but. Um, but the point is, is that at the end of the day, universe wants you to look into it and educate yourself completely and don't use bias because you're going to realize this revelation that you're having may be a revelation that you might have a perspective that's biased and inherently hurtful and harmful towards other people. And I don't know why I felt the need to just bring that up, but I do know a handful of Pisces. And now I could be biased. I may think that they're a little, uh, I don't want to say delusional because they're so well-spoken. They're so smart, so intelligent. And there's just this disconnect. There's this disconnect between like how great and amazing and smart they are and like reality. And there's just this disconnect is like, is literally just stupidity right here. That disconnect is stupidity right in the middle. Because that disconnect, where where it happens most of the time, why a lot of people don't like Pisces, is because that disconnect of stupidity is because they, it don't make sense. Like, they will try and make something out of nothing, and nothing will come of it, you know? And people are like, what are you saying? What are you doing? Like... It's not making sense. Your math is not mathing, okay? And everyone else around you is like trying to help you, help you get back to reality. And and that's something that Pisces typically struggle with, I feel like, is because they're so wise. They're so smart. They're so experienced. Like they're so spiritual. They're, you know what I'm saying? It's like they're up here. And then they will say the most ignorant things. Ignorant things. And I'm not saying it in a bad way. I'm not saying like ignorant in a, uh, I should say it's naive, not ignorant, naive. It comes from a place of naive, okay? Because ignorant, it's like intentional, like you're intentionally doing this. And with Pisces, it's not, it's just complete naive. And, and that's what this revelation is going to come, come into your life. It's going to really, hopefully, bring some awareness, <coughs> you know, and even if it's not you that's going through the revelation and if it's someone else, it's still that disconnect. That's what I'm talking about. The disconnect that you guys have of naive stupidity. Maybe you're going to figure out how to navigate through those waters so that way you can connect with other people to help speak the truth, right? But let's move on, Pisces. Sorry, I felt like I was coming after you, but it was, I just needed to speak the truth because I'm dealing with a handful of Pisces right now, and that applied to all of them. So, 
Um, let's get started um, for my Aries friends and family. <coughs> All right, starting off strong, we have balance here. And we have um, six of pentacles here, which also reminds me of balance too, right? Material and spiritual prosperity. Ooh, excuse me. Definitely bring, there's a lot of balance. A lot of things coming into alignment right now. Did I just see a card flip? I did, I knew it. Destiny came out. Wow, this is beautiful. This is majestic. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. Then we had sacrifice, fulfillment of wishes, and power. I ignore my husband back there. If you can hear me, he's sick too. Um, we all sick around here. We came back from vacation and it was bound to happen, you know? We were surrounded by a bunch of new people that we don't know, eating food in a foreign place, contaminated water in Mexico. <laughs> yes, we went to Mexico, by the way. Um, okay, so let's get started. Okay. All right, you... You are going to have a test from God mm -hmm. with, it's just this destiny sacrifice situation. It's giving test from God. It's giving, see with the balance here, he's got everything, pentacle cups, wands and swords. Everything right now for you, it seems like in alignment where it's coming into alignment. And the thing is, is that we have things called cycles. We all have them, we all go through them. And in order for you to maintain this balance in your life, you have to go through this test. And we have them at the end of every cycle, just like a, a, a class. You know, you do have many quizzes and then you have a test at the end. If you fail, you'll have to restart the class. You'll have to retake the class. And it's the same thing with this life. So even if you pass the class, you just go into a different, um, a different advanced class. It's essentially, usually you're taking the same thing. Like if it's math, you're going to take advanced math afterwards. And then after that, you're going to take an even more challenging math. Okay, so view it as, as that. It, you're going to go through this test, essentially, um, where you're going to have to sacrifice something. Ooh, okay. You're going to have to sacrifice <coughs> okay, I see it. Your emotional welfare, your money, or, or your responsibilities or your powers. So it seems as if like... This is what you're struggling with. This is what it's between. Your fulfillment of wishes and your power. That's what you have to sacrifice. And power is all about, like, that leadership. You know, taking charge. Um, your courage. Your strength. Um, your dignity. Your respect. Your honor. Or you have to give up the money right? The money or the, uh, the waterfall is your emotions. So I kind of feel like you're being tested and tempted. Like, I don't know why I want to say this, but it's like, if you're in a relationship, you're being tempted. Do you want to cheat? Cause one, okay, let's talk about a lion for a second. Lions are not loyal. They say that they're loyal to who? 
to what? They're not. They're not loyal to anything. All they care about is being the biggest and the baddest. Having the most lionesses. They don't even care about their cubs. Right? Once a male cub gets old enough, he kicks that male cub out. If the male cub is weak, they all, like, you know, essentially leave the, the cub to survive and fend on its own. So, point is, is that toxic. Toxicity is how I perceive lions. I And lion, and that's the thing about power, is, like, they say it takes, you know, strength, but it also takes a lot of... I'm not going to get to that. Was calling. <clears throat> anyway, so um, strength, power, dignity, honor, that's what they care about. But do they really? Because a lot of times when we see in like movies or TV shows or in history, we know that people of power abuse it so that way they can maintain power, right? So what they what they do is use fear, right? So that way they can, um, you know, maintain maintain their power of authority or whatever point is is that i see this as a card of do you want to be like mr cool you want people to fear fear you do you want to cheat on your wife you know whatever just so that way you can be the biggest and the baddest but you don't give a fuck about anybody else around you you know at the cost at the cost of your financial well-being you know, like this prosperity, this abundance, this love that you have. Or you can choose love. You could choose your wife. You could choose not to cheat. You could choose, you know, choose your money. Choose your health. Your mental health. Like, that's what it's asking you to do. It's going to test you. It's going to tempt you. Do you want to cheat on your diet? Do you want to cheat on your wife? Do you, you know, would you rather do this instead of focusing on, on what needs to be focused on? To maintain your happiness? That's the question for you. Interesting. Interesting. <coughs> and, the, and the sad thing is, is, is like right now you have it. Good. So the question is, is do you want to change it? Because you're going to be sacrificing everything that's amazing in your life right now. Or you can choose to keep it, essentially. What advice do you have for my Aries friends and family right now? Starting off with Beaver. What's that say? Productiveness. Go ahead and just do it. Coyote, wise fool. It says, accept your follies and find teaching in them. So, universe is just asking to get this over with. This test. You know, obviously you've been tempted for a while. It's not just something that like comes out of nowhere. Um, because if it would, it wouldn't really be a test. Um, if you weren't preparing for it in some way. So universe, if it, let's just say it was cheating on your spouse. I feel like this is a notorious test for the universe. It's like, you know for a while now whether or not you intend to be faithful, right? And to top it off, when you are being tempted, you know right then and there that it is a test of temptation. And if it wasn't a test of temptation because cheating never crossed your mind, then it wouldn't be a test because you'd just be like, it'll get the fuck out of my space, my area. I'm faithful around here. Bye. Enough said. No test, right? But the universe is going to test you. So you, you've been, you know what this test is. And now the question is, is, do you want to reaffirm to the universe whether or not you're going to pass this test on what you want to do with it? Because if you fail, you're, you're dumb. Like, I, I don't know how to say it. Like, universe, with it says wise fool. Like, wise fool as in, like, you know what's going to happen if you choose to cheat. You know what's going to happen if you... Throw this all away. The silence is loud. Silence intensifies. Okay? So don't be stupid. Please. The universe is telling you. You know the consequences of failing the test. And the universe just says this every now and then. Especially if like, you know, we're going through something. 
The universe just wants to test us to make sure that we're still in alignment with it. Because if we're not in alignment with it, then that abundance isn't meant for us anymore. Then we have to, what is meant for us is another learning experience. Because that's just how life works. You live and you learn. So do you want to choose to learn or do you want to choose to live? Right? That is the end of today's reading for my Aries. Let's get started for, um, what's after Aries? Taurus. Oh, my Taurus friends and family. Yeah. These cards, they just can't fly right off. Okay. One, two, 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 two. I'm trying to put these in order, but I never remember the second they fall out. Interesting. Starting off strong with the two of wands. You planted some seeds. You walked away from it. You're being patient. You're grounding. You're connecting with that four of swords. Have heart chakra here. You know, another four. Yeah. Then we have 20, truth. You have 420. <laughs> That's funny. Um, truth. And then you have for the foundation and achievements. <clears throat> How I'm perceiving this right now is you were seeking truth. I mean, I feel like this is very self-explanatory. You were seeking truth. You were seeking love. You were seeking a place from a place of honesty. Um, let's see what else is going on. Okay, destiny. Seven of wands. It says patience and planning. Oh, sorry, this isn't wands. This is pentacles. Seven of pentacles. Patience and planning. Nine of wands and ace of swords. So it does feel like you're granted this opportunity for truth. However, it wants you to be specific on what it is that you want to know, on, on how you want it to present itself. So that way you know what it is. So if you're asking for enlightenment, the universe is like, okay, on what? What do you want to know? And then you're like, oh, I want to know X, Y, and Z. And the universe is like, okay, I'll tell you. But sometimes, depending on how you receive these messages, you won't be able to interpret it. So you have to be specific on how you want to receive these messages. Do you want to receive them in a dream? Do you want to see them specifically through numbers? Do you want to see them like on TV, um, on a t-shirt, like through music? And then you just let universe know that whatever it is, that you want to know about how you want to receive that message so that way when you see it or hear it you know that that is the message for you but it seems like you're going to get the, the message you're going to receive this enlightenment that you ask for this truth that you're looking for it does look like it <coughs> i'm covering my shirt and you're not even here so mm. Kind of nice. I mean, foundations and achievements. Yeah, you're looking for stability. Questions about some stuff. What advice, universe, do you have for my Taurus friends and family? Dude, the badger keeps coming out. Oh my gosh, badger. Perseverance. It says, dig in and see it through to completion. Dear Pathfinder, trust your instincts to guide you through the situation. Maybe the truth that you're looking for is what you're meant to do in life. Maybe you're kind of feeling at a crossroads, like what your purpose is, what's going to make you happy, and that's why you're asking for enlightenment and you're asking for truth because you want clarity on whether or not you're making the right decision or not. 
And the universe is letting you know. Well, it's saying dig it in and see it through to completion. Meaning, look into it more. There's nothing wrong with you asking the universe. There's nothing wrong with you meditating for an hour every single day till you get your answer. Or you praying, um, doing tarot or a call astrology or whatever. Seeking God to you so you can get your answer. And then it's saying... With the deer, the pathfinder here, it says, trust your instincts to guide you through the situation. Because um, you know the best way to hear from God in order for you to receive the message and understand it um, and things like that. So that is today's message, Taurus. I hope you have a great rest of your week. Um, and I will see you guys next week. Until then, we're moving on to Gemini. Let's get started on my Gemini readings <coughs> interesting okay starting off with base chakra and then we have stand your grounds okay if you don't know what this means I feel like it's so obvious but Bay chakra is all about barely getting by. I feel like it's just surviving. That's what I call the survival energy in your body. It's just worrying about your next paycheck, worrying about food, worrying about the bills being paid, things of that nature. You're, you're feeling very alone and helpless um, and you're really just trying to work through uh, through this battle, because it is a battle. Anytime base chakra is here, I know it's a battle, especially with uh, the seven of wands here. Struggling, fighting for your life right now, aren't you? Um, this could also represent any uh, mental illness or physical illness, um, and you're going through a battle in that sense with your health. Um, but it does look like with this Ace of Pentacles that you're given an opportunity to make money. I think, well, Pentacles in my perspective is all about like <clears throat> material things. So you're given an opportunity of... And, and I, I, it's a long term. It's not just like a one and done. See, because it's like this one seed is multiplying and it takes years, you know, and this is for years to come. Fruit forever, you know. So that's how I'm perceiving this is this opportunity is going to help you that it presents itself. It, the opportunity is presented itself and given to you. What you do with it is your choice. Do you want to water this plant so that way it can give you fruit? Your choice. Do you not? Also your choice. You can choose whether or not this benefits you. But it could be a job. It could be a house. I want to say it's a job. But, you know, a way that it brings financial stability. But it's just stability in general. So maybe you have a garden and now you don't have to worry about paying paying for food so now that money can go towards other expenses so let's see what else <laughs> hmm we have seven of swords and two of swords it's not everything's not as it appears to be i think that you're scared this is stress this is this is being scared worrying about um <clears throat> this is anxiety, worrying about the future, things that haven't happened yet. With the uh, deception and envy, you're kind of not trusting that it is as it appears to be, that this is a blessing for you. I don't think that you, you recognize this as a blessing. <clears throat> we have conflict and defeat and the waiting game. So this opportunity that's being given to you, just so you know, it's just the seed. You're not getting a full-blown tree right now. 
it doesn't mean that it won't be a tree. It doesn't mean that it won't support you. It's just not right now. And I think in your world, you don't think that you can do it, that you want to wait that long. You don't want to wait the waiting game. See how the tree is going its roots, it's going the leaves. I don't think that you feel comfortable enough to wait it out to see how wonderful this experience is for you um, and this opportunity, this blessing, abundance. You're very, very scared and hesitant to accept it, which I don't blame you, but why are you going to throw something away when just because it doesn't be benefit you now in this very second doesn't mean that it won't in the future. You won't regret it in the future. So... We have horse freedom. You always have a choice. My mama, who's a Gemini in uh, modern astrology, her favorite animal is a horse. So, mom, this is for you. Um, rabbit fertility. Your creativity is at peak. It's interesting because trees, especially growing fruits with those with the roots and stuff that's all about fertility right because you're growing new things you planted seeds that it's essentially fertility so i think it's just reminding you that you don't have to accept this abundance but if you do you will have to put a little bit of effort and energy into nurturing it so that way it can benefit you because it's not going to just come you know, as a full-blown tree, you know, you have to do the work. And even if it did come as a full-blown tree, you have to maintain it. Because if you don't, it'll die and then everything rots and then you don't get to benefit from it, right? So that's your message for today, Geminis. I will see you guys next week. Hope you guys take up the opportunity and put in that work so that way you can accept your abundance. Let's get started on Cancer's what cancers have interesting let's see okay five cards starting off with crown and sacral chakras then we have fertility here next to sacral. Okay, sacral literally is in connection with fertility, okay, creativity. We have the four of pentacles. It says firm foundation. We have the shadow self right here. So... Crown chakra is about divine knowing. Sacral chakra is about creating, birthing. Um, that's why the fertility is here. It's emphasizing that. It wants you to know and create stability in your life. But in order to do that, you have to work through your shadow self. And the thing about the shadow self is what? Confronting the parts of us that we don't want to accept. It's called taking accountability. Right? Let's see what else. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Okay. <clears throat> Then we have patience, planting a seed, watering it, nurturing it. That's what the universe wants for you. It seems as though like you are, mani you are manifesting this spiritual union, it says. Okay. Now, this is two of cups, two of cups. Most people think it's just about, you know, relationships, which it is. But it's all about coming into alignment with that perfect person but 
with the shadow here, I don't think that it's necessarily, you know, with a specific person. I do think that it could be with yourself. Um, and I think that the universe wants you, like you're manifesting this version of yourself, I think. And the universe wants you to take accountability and address the shadow self so you can be that person, you can be that bitch. Um, so you could have this, because this is at the end, This um, it says foundation and achievement. You want the picket fence, the perfect house, the family, the rainbow, the land. This is the result of working hard and taking accountability and living your best life, right? Destiny. This is it. This is everything you've been manifesting. This is your dream life. You know it exists. You know it's out there. But it says stand your ground. This is the seven of wands. I think that you are having an internal battle. And it's not an internal battle of whether or not you deserve it. This isn't coming from a place of not feeling good enough. This is coming from a place of ignorance. Um, and you not taking accountability for a certain side of you that is the reason you can't have this. So this, this aspect of you that is unhealed, that is inexperienced, that is holding you back is here, preventing this. And the universe wants you to address this so that way you can receive your destiny, your fate, your abundance, your divine ab abundance. This isn't just like a simple um, one and done, or sorry, how do I say it? Like just it's a, an, another little abundance. No, this is the abundance we're talking about. This is everything. Everything. This isn't just, oh, that car. No, this is everything. This is the car with the house with the spouse, with the kids, if you want kids, with the pets, with the land, with the money, with the job, if you even want a job. Like, this is everything. Like, you don't understand how this is a big deal. And the crazy thing is, is you don't even have to physically work for it. Like, universe will give it to you when you put yourself in alignment with it. But this shadow self is not letting you. It's sabotaging you. And that sucks. And, and um, I mean, everybody has a shadow side, you know. That doesn't, you're not a target, you know. There's other signs out there going through similar stuff. But once you can address that you're, I'm not saying you're the problem, but you are the reason. I hate to say it. You're the reason, babe. But that, that puts the power in your hands. When the power is in your hands, you can recognize that you have the ability to change your fate. You have the ability to change this. But not by demanding it. But by addressing um, your past self or your subconscious self um, into... You know, put put that bitch in, in mediation. You know, trying trying to connect with with the shadow self. You know, try and make deals with it. <laughs> You're like, look, if you let this go, if you forgive, if you do this, look at what, all the things that we can have. You gotta tempt your shadow self, your subconscious. You know, make it worth its while. So. That is your message today, Cancers. I hope you have a great rest of your week. And I will see you next time. Until then, we are starting on... Oh. <coughs> and, uh, oh. Uh, I ain't gonna stop recording. The heck? <coughs> <coughs> okay. The heck I look like. So let's get started on Leo's. My Leo Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Oh. Leo in the first card to come out is his power card. It's supposed to be strength. And then we have seven of cups. Choose wisely. You know, 
I'm not, I don't favor this card, the strength card necessarily, because I love strength, you know, be bold, be courageous, but I just don't think lions are the best representation of it, but this, this your card, this your energy, even got yellow, this your color, right? <clears throat> Solar plexus. You have a gut feeling about something. Let's see what else is going on. Balance. <coughs> fertility. Yeah, fertility. Okay, so what else? Let's get as much details. Ooh. Okay, I don't do reversals, by the way. Okay, I think this is plenty. I got eight cards out. Okay. Starting off with this power card. Power is all about strength, right? This is what it represents. Strength and courage. This is you. This is like, this is the first card to come out. This is you. We talk about you, Leo. Yes, you. Center of attention all the time. With this, the sun here, literally. It's a star, actually. But... <clears throat> I do find it interesting. I feel like you're being called in multiple directions, which is why this came out. But so did the balance card, which is has multiple facets, right? They're uh, wands, pentacles, cups, swords. And with the new beginnings here, so many things could happen right now. You're being pulled in a million different directions. I think this is a good thing. I, I feel I feel like you're birthing something. You literally have fertility and new beginnings right next to each other. You see that? Crazy. And you have the star card here. <coughs> Isn't that crazy? And then lastly, you have throat chakra. So you had two chakras here. You had solar plexus and throat chakra. You can sense this coming. And I think the universe wants you to speak it into existence. This is wonderful. Speak this into ex existence. Bring... Bring balance into your life. What else? Let's, let's see what advice they have. Because it that was very... Very simple. It just kept clarifying itself. But essentially it's you're ending a chapter. You're starting a new chapter. And you are given a multitude of different opportunities that you can embark on. And essentially it just wants you to speak it into existence. It's just very easy. So what advice do you have for my Leo friends? Plant the seeds. We have patience here. Plant the seeds, water it, nurture it. Interesting that this came on. Choose wisely. I think it wants you to focus on what you're watering too. Because if uh, you're going to plant a lot of seeds. You're probably going to plant different kinds of foods and, and berries and bushes and um, trees, whatever. Right? You're going to get to plant in. And the universe is saying, hey, be resourceful with your water and just pick pick what you're actually going to use, what you want to utilize. Um, we have this moving on card, which is the six of swords. I kind of feel like obviously you're going to have to walk away from some. Like you're going to be watering some and not watering the others. That's why you're moving on, walking away from different, um, from the ones that you're not watering. So you're going to start off seeing, experimenting about what it is that you want, um, how you water it and things like that based on, I feel like I'm just speaking out of my ass right now. You're going to be watering different ideas 
And through trial and error, you will recognize what is meant for you and what's not meant for you, okay? We also have the authority card here. So you'll, you'll know through experimentation what is and what isn't meant for you. That's what I've gotten from this. Very Leo Leo energy. But let's do one more um, <clears throat> advice card. <clears throat> okay, we have beaver productiveness. Just go ahead and do it. And moose authority. You're getting a lot of this authority energy. You know what is best for you. Okay? Get to work, it says. Get to work. Start planning those ideas. Speak it into existence. Universe, I want a car. I want it to be this thing with this mileage, with this color, four door, good on gas, this price range. You know, I want these, I want that, I want that. <laughs> I want the house, I want the kids, I want the car, I want the family, I want the job, I want the money, I want the vacation, I want the salary, I want the health care. I want, I want, I want. Do you get where I'm coming from? Just get to it. Start, start listing it out. And then start looking into what you're actually taking seriously as you're going through it, you know? Just kind of anticipate you'll get all of it. And then eventually as you're, you know, uh, developing more passions, um, the ones that aren't meant for you will kind of just, you know, disintegrate from your, from your vision and, and you'll be more attracted to the things that you keep watering and nurturing, right? So that's pretty good. You got manifestations coming, but you got to put in a little work, but you've also got to be specific on what it is that you want. So then that way it'll come into your life. Start watering. But that is the rest of today's reading i hope you guys enjoyed it um have a great rest of your solar eclipse i like didn't even need the tissues it was great so um yeah have a great rest of your week and i will see you guys next time love you